12 and Randy are playing Farming Simulator 22 on Genesee, New York, our Rags to Riches series here. And since last episode, finished up a couple of the uh, contracts we were working on here. And then also, as I mentioned last episode, we'd be uh, starting on the cotton contract here this episode. That is still the uh, plan here. So first things first, let's go check out the contracts I finished. And I did complete one of them completely off camera here. So there's one that's already done and I completed it. So we had, must have been a total of four of these that we actually had completed then. So field 26, cultivating, done. We'll collect that one. Always the best part, right? When you got the contracts done, we get the money. So uh, field 45, contract done, collect it. And oh, by the way, you know, it shows 25,000. Here's what we're actually getting on the, the total down here. Because again, keep in mind, we are leasing the equipment for this. So 22,000, uh, collect on that one. And then for the last one here, wow, actually uh, 37. Apparently we had uh, a little more lease cost on that one. Not sure what that's based on. Just maybe the time you're using it. I don't know. But anyway, 37000 for that one. So good there. I see we got a couple more. A couple of smaller contracts there. 67000 harvesting there. I'm going to guess that's probably... Oh, yeah. Corn. Okay. Corn or sunflowers. So yeah, it is corn. Field 4 harvesting. Also sunflowers on that one. Okay. A couple of bigger contracts. I might have to look at here. Well, uh, we're good for this episode, though, I think. Anyone... Uh, and I was looking at this like, oh, you know what? We can harvest that this episode. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. When this uh, uh, is not exactly a large field, but uh, I don't think we can harvest this entire cotton field here uh, this episode. We'll, we'll see you know, as far as we can, everyone. But anyway, let's uh, fire up the harvester and start uh, start harvesting. Probably help by I uh... I'll just lower it down. Oh, okay. I guess it just wasn't quite all the way folded out yet when I pulled it into the field. Now it's working. There we go. And I got to say, when it's been a while since I've done any uh, cotton harvesting here. I don't think of cotton harvesting in New York. That doesn't seem quite right, but oh well, minor details on that one. Uh, yeah, location might be a problem there for the cotton, but oh well. Running the case module uh, builder here. Case H 635. This big makes the big square cotton bales, of course, by the way. Probably see if we get some uh, GPS setup here at some point as well. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work with this field. Although, this side of the field is probably just straight, so that's probably what we'll go with here. Or kind of headlamp pass or two here first, then we'll. Uh, Look at getting that dust set up. And my intentions, I were to spend the episode doing the cotton harvest. We'll have to see once here. Maybe if we get about halfway through the episode and decide we want to throw hard work on this, maybe we'll do that too. We'll see once how it goes, everyone. Initially, I didn't think we'd get uh, a bale of cotton off this field, but I might be wrong on that one. We might actually get... Uh, a bale or two. Again, I'm going to keep my 4x map here. So, you know, you go look at the map. Ah, that doesn't look like that big of a field. And you get out there, it's like, oh, yeah, 4x map. So, doesn't look like a very big field for a normal size map. But you got to remember, four times bigger than what uh, maybe you're used to. So, And for those of you seen the last episode, we uh, made quite a bit of progress here as far as getting our auto drive network, our auto drive road network uh, set up. Wow, we uh, really hit a lot of fields there last episode. Which actually reminds me, I did not create one for this field yet. I don't know if it's necessary, really, because field 55 is right across the road of it. And that's what I used to get to this field here, uh, field 54. I do believe there's a couple trees in this field. What in the world? Wondering if our first, uh, a little too far there. Wondering if our first equipment purchase seven should be like a chainsaw or two. Yeah, that's a, that's a new one there. Wow. We'll just, uh, we'll probably just harvest around them for now, I guess. Luckily, not really our field per se, but we're just doing the contract on it, so. Outside of maybe uh, getting in the way for the contract here, really doesn't affect me a whole lot. Now, mind you, I don't know if we own that field 
yeah, we would uh, either be uh, painting some terrain around that uh, to take that part out of the field, or we'd be getting chainsaws out and uh, doing some serious chainsaw work there. still doing its uh, thing in there. Not really sure how this uh, machine actually works, by the way. I should probably uh, take time sometime and uh, maybe see if I can find uh, a little how-to on how uh, this machine actually works. And the, the round baler one, I'm, I'm you know, fairly familiar with how a round baler one works. I mean, that's, uh, that's, I don't want to say straightforward, but it's fairly uh, straightforward how those work. Up now, 15%. I've only made it around the field once, actually, not quite once here yet. Almost there. Oh, that's a three. Okay, I'm about to call that good for what's under there. You know, again, as I've said before, when it comes to harvest, you don't have to have 100% of the field, just get the majority of it. Call it good. And of course, uh, keep in mind of when you are doing the contracts, make sure you do harvest the entire field because whatever's left that's not needed for the contract, you can sell as profit. And of course, a little hint with that is, of course, uh, if you are borrowing equipment, uh, don't turn that equipment in either until you harvested the entire field and sold all that is uh, remaining. Don't rather like not starting in the middle of the field here myself. I mean, I'm actually going to just go uh, back it up here or go back to this end here and start another line. I might be able to get the setup with GPS here too. Yeah, because this looks like it's going to be the straightest. That is facing roughly, is that like 80 some degrees here? Okay. That's a bit of a new angle. That looks like we're looking at roughly 84 degrees or somewhere in thereabouts. Field boundary, found it. Or uh, actually, I shouldn't say field boundary, map boundary. I mean, wow. Yeah, right there it is. I see back up just a little bit further, but I guess that's going to be it. Oh. But, uh, why you know harvest you're on yet? Ah, raised it up. That's what happened. Doesn't, uh, doesn't show you that on the vehicle information there, does it? Whether the header portion actually, uh, raised up or lowered down. That's, uh, Interesting. Okay, GPS. Let's get this uh, set up here a minute. So we're going to go to A plus heading. Let's try 84 degrees. Auto with that. Um, I set that, didn't I? Yeah, that 84 degrees. I wonder if I didn't like the fact that it was 0, 084. There we go. And before I go to too much trouble saving this, I'm going to see if this actually works or not. Looks like it's going to. Actually, it's going to work quite nicely. Wow. Unless it uh, changes on the other side of this field. I mean, this will be like the uh, the best uh, alignment for the GPS course here yet. Most of the time when I set up these angles, I went, yeah, you get close, right? But it's not 100%. Oh, uh, this one might not be quite 100% either, I guess. Looks like we are getting uh, into the crop here slowly but surely. So it needs to be it's a little bit less of an angle, I do believe. Oh, no, never mind. It needs to be more of an angle because I just made this last. Now we're down to like 82 here. That means I don't think 84 is still pretty close. Let's go ahead and save that here. Get that 84 degrees. And save that one. Yeah, as you can tell, we're getting quite a few uh, different uh, GPS courses here from all the different angles that are on this map with these fields. And uh, again, a reminder, for those of you who have not seen the map here, let's just uh, pull it up here a second. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Everyone, that's, uh, that's interesting. 
And what happened? Did I raise it up? I must have raised it up. Well, in that case, I'll try to lower that back down here, might I? Let's see, what are we up to? 24% of the bale? Yeah, 24% of them. And here I was thinking we could uh, finish this entire field here, this episode. I just don't think that's going to happen. We've got, what, another 20 minutes to go here about. I don't think we can get this entire field harvested in 20 minutes. So, oh well, we'll have to uh, finish that up off camera. And out of curiosity, where do we got to take the bales for this here? So, we got to take cotton to the oak field gas station sell point, huh? The gas station wants... Ah, interesting. I wonder what they're doing with that one. And where is that cell point? I'm looking for one to see if it's blinking. I'm mean, usually uh, they'll be blinking, but I'm not seeing that unless I'm missing it. Oh, okay, never mind. Blinking. It, it has the exclamation point. So right, oh, right down the road. I mean, right down the road. That's not too bad. I don't think I have. No, I don't have any route for that one. We'll have to look into doing that here. I'm on auto drive. That's good. There we go. Put it out there for a second. And at the very least, I'm definitely going to want another pass or two on this side of the field here so it can make it a little easier to turn around. Like I said, apparently the uh, map author put that uh, map boundary right close to this uh, field here. It gives us a whole lot of extra room to turn around on that side. And of course, we've got all the trees down on this side here, too, yet. So. Yeah, speaking of trees, that is going to be a fun one. Boy, if I set this up with a horse player or hired worker at some point, that's going to be a mess down there. Have fun with that horse play. Oh, God damn it. I do like the GPS, though. Locking on, and away we go. Oh, speaking of away we go, let's head over to our comments here a moment. Let's see if I get those to uh, load up. There we go. Okay, over to the comments here, everyone. Uh, Matt was saying, nice video, and today is my birthday. Well, hey there, Matt. Happy birthday. Hope you have a good uh, birthday. And a reminder, too, of course, that one, if you haven't already left a comment, make sure you leave one down below in the uh, description, or down below the uh, description here. Always very much appreciated. And speaking of the uh, description of this video, by the way, uh, if you'd like to uh, follow me and subscribe, everyone, you can find that down below, as well as the information for all the rest of my social media accounts there down below in the uh, description of this video. And a reminder, too, if you'd like to catch some uh, RDL live, uh, you can find a link down below for that as well. R.D. Allen on Twitch. Again, R.D. Allen on Twitch. And we're playing on the Griffin, Indiana map on the multiplayer server, by the way. Uh, Christopher was saying, a good video. Keep it up. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, Keith was saying, just a thought, use the money you're making and become a custom harvesting operation. Ah, you're reading my mind there, Keith. You are reading my mind. That is exactly what I was thinking about doing. And that, uh, maybe getting a fertilizer and some cultivating equipment here as well. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of fertilizer. Well, just not even quite a bit. We've done a couple of fertilizing contracts. Uh, we've done a lot of cultivating contracts. Uh, for one thing, I mean, they're easy. Not much to them. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of harvesting contracts. I mean, and again, like I said, a, a lot of that's got to do with how painful they are to do on this map here with the equipment that you're giving everyone. You know, when you're waiting for a truck to drive halfway across or all the way across the map to make the delivery, and you're waiting like 20 minutes for the truck to go down there, unload, come back. Oh my goodness. Brutal. Brutal. So, again, as I said, if we get into our own uh, harvesting here, we definitely need multiple trucks and probably some grain carts. 
thinking that's going to be the answer to our, uh, our problem here, if you want to call it a problem anyway. Uh, Norman was saying, I just learned when you're connecting auto drive points, if you spin the mouse wheel before clicking the second point, it puts an arc on it instead of a line. Helps the vehicles turn better. Well, hey, I did not know that when they're Norton. I will have to give that a try here sometime. Very, very interesting. I could probably uh, make use of that here in a few of my uh, courses. Usually I just go with the straight lines. And again, usually it works on them, but not always. Especially, again, as I said before, with this map here, um... Uh, a lot of wide open areas, but the one area where we're having problems I'm going to some of the intersections here where the map author has various lights and signings and all that good stuff there for auto driver to get stuck on as it tries to cut the corner a little too close, which, as folks all know, that seems to be a common theme there with auto drive. If it can cut the corner, it will. Well, we're half full of one and halfway through this episode and still no bail yet. I don't know, maybe I will be right on. Maybe we can harvest this entire field here and not get a bail. Uh, train. I think it's train doctor. I was presuming is how you want to say that. Uh, train doctor was saying your, your pronunciation is correct. Genesee is a river that runs through the western part of New York. Also, the name of a beer in the area. It's actually Genesee County near Batavia, New York. Very, very interesting. Uh, and again, as I said before, when this map is based on a real life location, I wasn't exactly sure where, but uh, it's a real life location, real life terrain here. So the map author took the uh, terrain for the area, and that, that's what you folks see. Here's what it is. And I'm assuming it's match closely or exactly. I'm not exactly sure how uh, close that gets to that type of thing I one, but pretty cool. As I've said before, I, mean, I do like maps with a little bit of rolling hills on them. Now uh, this part of the map actually has a couple of really good hills on it, right in this uh, section here. Flat maps, uh, if you ask me, I'm just uh, like a little on the boring side, right? So I like to see some hills. Must have got to lower it down here again. Backing up. Uh, Killing was saying, I haven't played without precision farming since it came out. I think I could say the same thing here as well, but I don't believe I've played a map without precision farming since it came out. Just, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Is there a reason really to play without it? It, it just adds a little bit extra to the game ever without maybe necessarily adding a whole lot per se because with precision farm that one just like you can base game you still have to lime it's roughly every third harvest that really hasn't changed a whole lot other than the fact now that you can actually kind of like see the lime levels on the field uh fertilizer has changed in a sense having that you can now apply it all in one shot uh, of course base game I mean, you have to put down two applications of fertilizer but uh, with Precision Farming Oven, you can put it down all in one application with the planter. So that, that's probably the big reason, maybe right there, everyone. That makes doing planting really easy, uh, as long as your planter supports fertilizer anyway. Because again, you can do it all in one shot. Now, uh, you can do the same thing, too, if your planter does not support fertilizer. You can still put the fertilizer down all in one shot. So that's probably the big... Uh, Biggest change maybe between uh, precision farming and base game, I would say, of one. You know, everything else precision farming wise, it's about the same, really. Uh, Tim was saying, can you please do a bailing contract to mix things up a bit? Well, unfortunately, I don't think I've seen any bailing contracts here. In fact, I don't think I've seen any at all. I'll have to keep an eye on them. I don't believe I've seen those type of contracts. Uh, Tim was also saying, nice video, and I think you should purchase a tractor and fertilizer spreader to do some fertilizer jobs. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, if we went with that, I wonder if we could buy a fertilizer and uh, 
tractor to pull or hold the fertilizer spreader relatively cheaply compared to, say, getting into, like, the harvesting operation or some of the other operations we could potentially get into here. Uh, the fertilizing one would, in, in theory, be a little bit cheaper one. And that's maybe just what we'll do. I mean, maybe we'll uh, do a little fertilizer contracts here first uh, with our own equipment. And then we'll, uh, again, I'd like to I'd definitely like to do some custom harvesting here as well. So we'll have to get our own uh, harvesting equipment. Uh, Tim was also saying here, I'm doing the same thing on Farming Simulator 19, no man's land. Between spring and wood sales and silage sales, I made $254,000. Got a new uh, trailer, cedar, and cultivator, and harvester. Oh, stretching them dollars there, Tim. Stretching them dollars. Nice. Well, let's see. We made it uh, through halfway, or over half of this episode. Now we're still working on harvesting here yet. Watch this field that we have done here. Uh, we're at 34%. Uh, the, the only thing to keep in mind with this 34% of one... Um, you do have to make the delivery as well. So this progress here won't necessarily reflect how much of the field we actually have done. Because then again, the delivery will pay play into that a little bit there as well. Oh, so I'm just going to make a guess. You have over probably what halfway, I bet. Yeah, maybe not quite. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, we missed one little uh, stalk of cotton there. Oh, boy. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe they'll uh, catch it on the way back. Maybe. I wouldn't count on that necessarily, though. What are we up to? 69%? Oh, we might actually see a bail yet this episode. We'll have to see once here. It's going to be close. Uh, 69%, 70% there now. And we're... Oh, we got about eight minutes left here for this episode. If we go the entire 30 minutes, that one... I don't know. We might not see a bale this episode. Wow. Uh, let's show how long it takes to harvest that cotton and actually get anything that uh, you can show for it, right? Well, so far, at least even with the uh, GPS not lining up properly here, it is harvesting all the crop. That's good. Don't seem to miss anything from what I can tell. Check out the uh, cab view here a little bit. And you know what, while we're going up and down the field, I suppose we could go uh, check out the contracts here, see if there's anything interesting. So field 54, uh, that's the one we're working on. Field 38, cultivating, yeah, that's kind of small. Field 49, that might not be a bad one. $11,500 for it, can't complain about that. Field 49, huh? I think we've been to 49 before. And then field 50, oh, that's, that's the one right across from us. Where is 49 at? Like I said, could be wrong, but it seems like we've done that one before. Yep, 49, and that is, there we go, field 49. Okay. Well, I don't know about you folks. I'm thinking maybe we'll uh, take those two uh, cultivating contracts there. The end of this row here first, though. There we go. Well, I'm think in the interest of here of not getting too boring, I think maybe we'll uh, wrap it up here for uh, this episode. I know we're a few minutes uh, short, but again, I'm just going to keep going up and down the field, everyone, so I don't want to bore you folks too badly here with the, the details. 
and we'll see once if we get at least that. We should get at least one cotton bale here from Looks Evan, and then we'll probably have a part of a second one here from what I'm seeing. So, yeah, with that, Evan, thanks for watching. If you folks have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.